Back at the house now, we've got Mark Baker working on the stairs going down to the lower level. Earlier he did the ones upstairs, and these are coming together the same way with cherry skirt boards, cherry risers, and knee paid treads that he's using for individual steps. And believe me, with his techniques for gluing, nailing, and screwing, it turns out rock solid. Now very soon Mark's going to be ready to put the railing in right in this section, but before he does that, we have to trim out our support post here with these cherry boards. And as you can see, they're fairly wide. And of course, using the cherry works perfectly here since that's what you see in the rest of the house. And this is an excellent example of what our supplier, Brian Lawrence, provides in his large format boards. So Brian, your specialty is taking big boards out of big trees like this one. I, I gotta ask you, where do you get these things from? There can't be a lot of them around to cut down. Most of the logs I get are in the two to three to five foot diameter range. This happens to be a 200 year old white oak. I uh, actually got this tree four or five blocks from here. Mm -hmm. Where, where and, do you get the rest of them, though? Uh, they're all urban logs uh, taken locally from uh, parks, uh, somebody's yard. And on this side, I've got laid out uh, how I would flat saw this log, where I'm making cuts tangentially to the growth rings. Um, and I work my way around the log as I hit defect, working my way down smaller and smaller. And I've got an example of uh, some flat sawn red elm here. All right, this is where the kind of the grain just gets spread out like that. What, what do you call that sort of? This is this is what they refer to as cathedral grain, and okay. everybody's seen that in uh, typical red oak around the house. Okay. Now, how about quarter saw? You hear a lot about quarter saw. On this face of the log, I've shown how I would quarter saw a big uh, white oak like this. Typically, I would start by cutting along this line, and then do a sequential cut right down to here and then turn, cut these pieces and then I end up with four quartered pieces and the quarter sawn look uh, looks like this right over here. This is an example of quarter sawn white oak. Oh yeah. So very tight graining and then you get a lot of this uh, other stuff coming. This is uh, pith ray or what people refer to as ray fleck. On these quartered pieces typically when they get a little bit smaller and the pith ray or ray fleck is coming through at an angle like this, more at an angle, not along the face then that's called riff sawn or bastard sawn. And that looks like this. This is a piece of riff sawn white oak, like this. Straight grain, but it's absent of the ray fleck. How do you make book matching happen? Um, book matching is, is lumber that's sequentially cut, and I, I keep track of it, my numbering it. And basically, it's two boards that, on the same cut line, if you open them up, and I've got an example of it right here. This okay. is really wide quarter sawn red oak. Um, and you can see the mirrored image if you want to call Sorry. it that. Everything just kind of matches up as it goes up the board then. Yep. That's one of the advantages of keeping wood together and book matching it. Um, the color clarity stays the same. Yep. Um, use them for wide tabletops. Mm -hmm. That's one of, the re one of the uses. Okay. So I noticed that you marked out all the dates here. Uh, so this tree originally started growing in 1800. Yeah, this is a 200 year old white oak and you started your show right about here. Oh, so that's, that's on the tree rings. Nothing like making a guy feel old. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for helping us out. This was, yeah, this was interesting seeing this layout. You know, I've never actually seen it laid out on a, on a cut piece of wood like this. Okay, so Mark's got part of the railing on here, and Dan is wrapping up the column. So how'd you go ahead and uh, get it all taken care of here? Well, once I got all my blocking in, it's basically one piece at a time. I started on the back side, nailed it on, the two sides on with the blocking, and then clamping the whole time. And then very carefully putting the, the last piece on, clamp as it went, use a micro pinner to get everything pinned together. This is called patience and good tools is yeah. basically what it is. I like the detail we're using through the house here. We're doing 45 degree angles. Uh, 45s are tough to do because they yeah. always seem to open up. This is, a, it looks fancier, but it's actually easier to do for me. Perfect. No, it's looking good. Thanks. Very nice. Very nice. Well, Mark's making pretty good progress on the stairway. Now doing this one is basically exactly what you did upstairs. Yeah. We got our EPA treads and risers in. They're all screwed and glued and nailed in place in our skirt boards. Then you're able to move on to the railing here, which has a real nice little curve on the bottom again. Yeah, same as upstairs. We had to take it out to the shop, run it through the shaper and the table saw to make it bendable, then bend it here in place. So once you get uh, all the railings up and ready to go, then you're able to move on to the spindles. Yep. Well, I'll tell you, it's looking good. I can't wait to see it done. You know, I just love that uh, curve on the bottom. That's the best part. Me too.